Welcome to the Hour of Deliverance. I'm Reverend Dr. K.E. Holmes. And oh my goodness, email somebody, text somebody. We are going into what I call right in the sight of the Lord. It's a phrase in the scripture. And we're going to look at each place that that phrase is. Uh, not in a boring kind of way, but we want to see the value of what right in the sight of the Lord is. The value in being holy. The value in doing what God said the way God said it. Uh, and I, I want to bring that from the standpoint of righteous people always mean right. We always mean well. And we always know what we mean. However, God is right. God is well. And he certainly knows what he means he knows what he said. Yes, he knows us. He knows our frame that we're but dust. And that's why he's given us the revelation of himself, the revelation of his word. So we want to look at that which is right in the sight of the Lord in the, in the sense of the value in it, in the sense of the protection that's in it, in the sense of the direction that, that, that is in it, the right mind and right thinking that is in it, which of course means that you might also see the squirreliness that is there when you don't do what's right in the sight of the Lord. And mind you, I'm talking about the people of God. I'm talking about the saints of God. I'm talking about the elect of God. Even though when we go into it, some of it's going to look like we're talking about the heathen and the wicked. Because when we don't do that which is right in the sight of the Lord, even our best intentions go somewhere else. So, uh, get your Bible. And also, um, for those of you that have taken my Rightly Dividing course or any course uh, in, in anywhere, you might already know that God gives the revelation of His Word. And we know that it's the Pentateuch, the Psalm, and the Prophets as far as the Old Covenant is concerned. But that also is as far as the New Covenant is concerned in the sense that the Pentateuch, or Moses, as Jesus often said, or the law, that's where the nucleus of what God's word is, where he had given the oral law all before um, the Hebrews. Before there were Hebrews, God had law. He had commandments. He had way. Um, and the people knew it. The, the, he gave, the, he always gives us to know. And what he gave in Moses or what he gave in the law. And I'm not talking about the Levitical law. I'm talking about those first five books of Moses. That is what God calls in Isaiah 28, 10, uh, 9 and 10. That is the precepts of God. So that you know that when he says it there, that's what governs everything else. It's what, uh, it's, it's what shapes a thing the next time you come to it or as you live it out. Now the as you, you live it out if you're looking at Isaiah 28, 8, 9, and 10 when God says, to whom will I show knowledge and to whom will I give doctrine? There he tells us those who are weaned from the breast, those who, those who are, you're not on milk anymore. Now we know that that's not a wrong place just because God says that when you've moved from there, I'm going to teach you knowledge and doctrine. Because you know that in Peter he says, Desire the sincere milk of the word. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word. And that's made to something natural because we know that babies drink milk in order to grow. And there's nothing out uh, peculiarly wrong with being a baby. Now, there's a lot peculiar, peculiarly wrong with being a baby when you're grown or even when you're a child and you've moved into another stage. Then we know something's wrong. Not only do we know something's wrong, we know something needs to be done about it. So when we look at this, all of those features are going to be there when we look at right in the sight of the Lord. But what I want to give the emphasis to right now is the value. The value. There's protection. There's right mind. Protection of your mind, body, soul, and spirit. There's protection of your circumstance. There's protection of your anointing. Protection of your calling. There's protection of your positioning. There's protection of your revelation. 
there's all kind that that's just one thing there's there's so much in doing that which is right in the sight of the Lord and I do want to to say I'm not just dealing with what's right in the sight of the Lord but doing the doing and the reason why I let you know uh, uh, reminded us for those of us who already know that what God gives as Pentateuch is comparable to the precept that governs everything then what he gives in the prophets is like in when you if you're using Isaiah line upon line line upon line it's the next level of things that govern now the precepts govern that but then the next level of revelation and understanding and operating in the things God has given are line upon line, line upon line, and that would be the prophets. So that if a prophet prophesied anything, for example, if it didn't agree with Moses, if it didn't agree with what's in the Pentateuch, or if it was outside of, you know whether to take it as a word of prophecy or whether to dismiss it that this is not God and not from God. It has to agree with the nucleus. It has to agree with the precept upon precept, or it has to agree with Moses. Now, when you have the prophets and you know that these agree with Moses and they're giving you some more, you see, we're allowed to give some more. And uh, I like to bring out where Jesus said that your traditions have made the word of God of no effect. It's not that we're not allowed to have a tradition. It's that our traditions should bring something too. I have a couple of PhDs. One of the things I love about a PhD is that not only have you studied and have you mastered something, but you're to bring something new to that, to that study or to that area. And the, the prophets might elucidate, might, might give more on something that God showed in Moses on the very precept. And you know that you can listen when it agrees with Moses or when it agrees with the law. And again, we're not talking about Levitical law. We're talking about the command of God that governs all. So that when the prophets, in the prophets, you have things that agree with Moses and gives you some more. So that in the, pro okay, and then here a little, there a little, or in the Psalms. Now we're talking about the Hebrew canon order, not the way we have in our Roman order. Because uh, we're not of Rome, okay? We're of Abraham. We, we have the same promises that he had. The scriptures tell us that in Jesus Christ. Okay, so when you go to here a little, there a little, that's that thing applied to your life or applied to your situation, applied to your particular calling. So that there's going to be some specifics. They're not precept. They're not even line upon line. But they're specifics. And uh, for instance, in the Psalms, when David uh, uh, gets really down, he'll talk about it. And then he'll go into encouraging himself in the Lord. Now, if we had a precept of being down, you would want to think that it's of God and it's ordained of God to be depressed. Well, God understands that you, you that can happen. And when it happens, here's what you do. That's why it shows up in the prophets that we see. Here's how you deal with that. One of the examples I love to give all the time is um, uh, Elijah. After the Mount Carmel stand down and the wonderful victory that he had. He was spent. Now he was he was large and in charge. Oh my goodness, he was making fun of the prophets, and then God he and then he went into his full prophet mode, authority in God. Prophet part of part of the office of a prophet or the operation of a prophet is that you have authority that you move in. Um, we're not talking gift; we're talking position, and and uh, he has authority. And so he filled the 12 water barrels and, and the water ran down, but he called on God, the true and living God. And, and God showed up and sucked up that water. But after all of that, after all of that, we read that he ran. He ran from Jezebel. Now she's queen. She's not even king. She's not even the king who can... Uh, make a decree and, and, and 
You know, Proverbs tells us that you want to fear the command of the king. Yes, you, <laughs> pardon me, you ought to. He ran, but then you learn a you learn a principle, a line upon line. It's not a precept because it doesn't govern all, but you but something that governs many other things in life. God put the man the man of God to sleep. He he didn't try to talk to him first, he put him to sleep. And then when he woke him up, he fed him. Now there's some other wonderful things in there, but I'm just showing you that the 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 precept is is first followed and then in the prophets you get to understand some other things of how you live out this precept how you walk this out you know the scripture tells us in the new testament to walk out your soul salvation you know and so the pro in the prophets you see line upon line it's not precepts anymore they govern everything if it doesn't agree with this it's it's wrong it's just wrong but now that next level of things that govern certain kinds of situations and certain kinds of people, certain kinds of like the office of a king or of the prophet. And so we see that in that we have the precept that as a man of God, when he's tired and when he's spent, that's not the time to, to try to bring in other things. That's not the time to bring in women. They did that. They tried that. And we see that. And that's not what to do. We see what God did. He put the man of God to sleep. Then he woke him up and then he fed him and then he let him go back to sleep. Most of us, we think we get a little sleep and we want to get up and run. Well, you might want to do it the way God did it. Put him back to sleep and then he woke him up, fed him some more. And I think you want to check the account and put him back to sleep. But when he woke up again, now he talked to him and now his spirit, the spirit of the Lord came on him and he outran the best chariot in the world. So you want to know that kind of thing. So I'm showing you that I'm going to give you right in the sight of the Lord first as precept that governs everything. Then as line upon line or as God gave, it agrees with the precept, but it gives you some more direction, some more understanding. And then as the Psalms, it'll give you some particulars, how you walk this thing out in your life, your ministry, your call, your family, yourself. Amen. So wonderful, so beautiful. All right. So we're looking at right, right, pardon me, being right before the Lord. And uh, I want us to, uh, I went and took myself away from the page. But uh, we're first going to go into it from the Pentateuch way, and then we're going to go into it from the prophet way of what I just explained to you. So that we're going precept upon precept, and we're going to go line upon line, and then we're going to go here a little, there a little, how, it, how this applies in your life. So we're going to start with the way God gave us the revelation, the things that he gave in the Pentateuch are the things that matter the most, and even in the order that he teaches them. So the first time you see this phrase, right in the sight of the Lord, 
It's in Exodus 15:26. Now, mind you, I like to break a thing down every which way. I'm going to do my best to just stay with the point of doing that which is right in the sight of the Lord. In Exodus 15, 26, there is so much here. It says, And if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in the sight of the Lord, and will give ear to his commandments and all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Now that's where we get uh, uh, the name for for Jehovah Rapha, I believe. Let me check it. Because there's two. Uh, okay, I'm not looking at the scripture. I'm looking at my notes. Okay, now there's so many things in here. I'm going to try not to belabor this. But first of all, God says diligently. Okay, he, you have to be diligent about, about that. I have a course on uh, on the promises that are connected with diligence. I mean, for the diligent, God says he'll, he'll, what you think about, he'll bring it to pass because you're diligent. It's not because you did it. It's because you have that diligence. You are diligent. And the voice of the Lord, I have a whole other course on the voice of the Lord because the voice of the Lord causes things to happen. So he's letting you know that when you do that which is right, when you are diligent about doing that which is right, the voice of the Lord, even if you don't have a revelation on the voice of the Lord, he's still going to come with you that way. He's still going to come as a trumpet uh, that sets your sound for things that are righteousness and sets you so that you sound an alarm. He's, his voice is still going to cause hinds to cap. That means things are going to give birth on time. And they're going to give birth like they're supposed to. And there, there's going to be nothing lacking, nothing missing. That's what the voice of the Lord has to do with the many different angles of that. That's a whole other course. And then he says, now those are the two things in front of doing what that which is right in the sight of the Lord. And But then he also says, give ear. Now, how can you do what's right in the sight of the Lord without giving ear? Listen, it says, if you'll give ear to his commandments. Okay, so you've got to give ear, not just to everything and every every one. You're, you're supposed to give ear to the prophet. You're supposed to give ear to your parents. There's so many different things you're supposed to give ear to. You're supposed to know the sound of the trumpet. You are supposed to have your ear in tune to things that are God-ordained. And it's at different levels. Not everything at every level. Do you have give it your ear at every level? It's kind of like sight. The way that God made us to see is light comes into our eyes. But it doesn't all come in blazing. Or like the rainbow, that that uh, the rainbow is different refractions of light. So that one gives you blue, and another gives you green, and another gives you red. Uh, those are different refractions, and hearing is very like that. We know less about hearing than we know about, about sight. But you understand that there's different levels of hearing. And what he's saying is that you want to be diligent about hearkening. That's, that's not just diligent about hearing, it's diligent about hearkening. Diligent that I'm going to do what you said do. And he, and give ear to his commandment. Remember, like the refractions of light. There's many things that you are to give ear to. But to his commandment, ah, that needs to come in like a flood of light. And then he says, and keep. Now the way God tells us, tells us to keep is to practice. To make sure that we do over and over. That's why he said, uh, when he called, called uh uh, Abraham and then and calls him as his children and his people. He says, you're going to talk about me when you rise up. You're going to talk about me when you sit down. You're going to talk about me when you go out. You're going to talk about me when you come in. Most of us, when we're go, uh, going out and coming in, we're talking about uh, what was happening at that place. And, and then when we're coming in, a lot of times we're tearing down. We're talking, uh, you notice it, notice it. We're talking some negative stuff about somebody or it. Uh, we're doing correction. And we mean well. Remember at the onset, I let you know that righteous people, we always mean right. And that's why we're going through this. Because you want to know what doing right in the sight of the Lord. Not just what I mean. I always mean right. I always mean you well. And he says so. And keep all his statutes. Now notice he said commands and statutes. I have another course on. And you can just go. God's got his own course. In Psalm 119. There are 13 words for the word of God. Now if you're reading in uh, he, uh, 
Spanish, English, French, or whatever reading in your vernacular, you're only going to see 10. But there's a, a, a few other words that in the Hebrew, it's a different word, but like way. There's more than one word for way. Okay, so you want to, you want to group together, or what, however God gives you to do it. The way I do it is I group together what God says about statutes and what God says about commands. It's all His word. But it's his word here again, like that refractions of light, so that it, this does this. This is going to show you blue. This one's going to show you red. And when it's his word, he shows you, when it's my commandments, it's going to do this. And it's going to show up like that. And it's going to show up here. And when it's statutes, it's going to hold you up like that. It's going to be in front of you like this. It's going to come behind you like that. And so he says that if you do that, if you do that which is right in the sight of the Lord, here's the promise to it. You see, we're going, we were going through book of Revelation, matters of faith. God likes to attach a promise to what he said. He said, I will put none of these diseases. Now, these, he's talking about specific diseases. This isn't disease in general. Now, it's some very diseases specifically that we want to pay attention to. Because... The curse causes shall not come. There, those things came on them with a cause. And he says, I will put none of these diseases which I have brought upon the Egyptians. He's talking specifically about the things that he brought on. There's some things that come on because of, of uh, nature. That, oh yeah, it's the curse from man. But it, uh, for instance, I'm not allergic to poison ivy. Never have been since a kid. Uh, it's a wonder because other people are. And, and, well, it's a wonder to me when other people get those rashes and stuff. And that's not because God put that on on the person who has poison ivy. That has to do with the earth going wrong when man fell. But he's not specifically putting that on, the, on that particular nation. The things that come on a nation come... I don't want to get into that now because that's a whole other course again. But they come because God made a promise and he said, if you do this, you'll have this. But if you don't do this, here's what happens. Kind of like uh, uh, in Genesis 1, you know, you eat the tree, you eat of the tree of, of knowledge and you're, certain things are going to happen. You eat of the tree of life and what God let them know, what he put in front of them was the tree of life. Because God means for you to have life. You've got to always know that. So that was Exodus 15, 26. Now we're still in the Pentateuch. We're Ill, still in the precepts. In 6, 18, he says, And thou shalt do that which is right. So no, it's a doing. It's not just I have to mean right. Yes, you do. You do have to mean right. But what God is talking about in doing that which is right, he says, when you do that which is right in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with you. You see, some of us, we don't always know what to do. We don't even have all the information sometimes. Sometimes we think we have all the information and we only have a piece of it. And other, another piece of information might make another decision or another action on our part. But when you do that which is right in the sight of the Lord, he says he makes it so it's going to be well with you. And that's regardless of you. This is God of covenant. And notice this is Lord. I noticed in almost all of these, it's the Lord, God of covenant, the self-existent one. You know, it's God. Make no mistake. That's who is doing this. But God, who is in covenant with his word and his creation. And it's his covenant that he's ratifying, that he's keeping. And so what the covenant keeper, covenant giver, covenant maker says, you do that which is right in my sight, I'm going to make it well with you. You know, somebody can be mad at you and what they try to do, it's not going to happen. You know, and uh, he says that you may go in. Now watch. It's not just so that you can feel good. He, he said so that you can go in and possess the good land. You know, I know people in rehab and some of them like to rehab bad stuff. And I, sometimes I get into that too. I, I'll rehab what I call um, a house with fleas. <laughs> kind of like a dog with fleas nobody wants. Uh, and sometimes I'll do uh, a house that I'm not going to rehab that thing. No, I'm going to be the bank on that thing. And I'll hold the paper the paper on it for somebody else who wants to handle it. And usually it's because uh, you, you're a contractor or you have someone or know someone in that field and you can do it better, cheaper than I can hire someone to get it done. That's the only reason why I, am in particular, will get 
a, a house with fleas or a house that nobody else wants because somebody knows how to fix that thing and they know that it'll be worth it to them to do. But what God lets you know here is that so that it'll be well with you and not just so that you can, again, feel good. Yeah, you're going to feel good, but so that it can go well with you, not just to be well. Yes, you're going to be well, but so that you can possess the land. Now, in possessing land, you're going to find out that you possess a whole lot of other things. You might possess jewels. Uh, um, look at how God has done the Israelites. They possess diamonds. They possess all, all kinds of things. So on the way to possessing land, and I can show that to you. I deal with that when I deal with um, uh, prosperity uh, through the Messianic prophecies. And he shows you that you do the work of the Lord. And then there's this wealth transfer that we like to talk about. So he says, you do that which is right in the sight of the Lord. And he says, it's going to be well with you. That when that you may go possess the land. Now it doesn't say that you have to go. So that if God's given you to possess land and you don't go, he says that you may. It's yours. He's given it to you. If you don't take it, that's on you. Uh, or if you, if you, he said, possess the good of the land. Now if you want to do house with fleas, like I said, I do so. Now, I mostly like the good stuff, but I, I, you know, I'll, I'll hold the paperwork on this. I'm not going to rent it out because it's already in bad shape. No, I'll, I'll be the bank for you. But he says so that you can possess the good land. It doesn't mean that you come, don't come across other land. It's not good land. But what God's letting you know that when you do that, which is right in the sight of the Lord, you're go this is where it's going and there's a whole lot of other that goes with that but the end of it don't stop on on that you may possess because you will you're going to possess a lot of things but what he's bringing you to is possess the good land don't stop on just that it's land make sure it's good land because that's part of doing what that which is right in the sight of the lord and he watched this and he says which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, so that you're not going after things that God didn't give you, you see, so that you're not buying something that, um, say that there's a, what are we dealing with in, in our day and time right now, we deal with sinkholes. You're not buying a wonderful, beautiful house, only to find out it's a sinkhole on it. God already knows about it. When you do with that which is right in the sight of the Lord, he gives you to possess the good land. Okay, so that whether you knew it or whether you didn't know it, uh, in the town where I live, when I first came here in the 70s, God told me that most of this was on swamp. And, and there was a curse on the land for a very long time so that the swamps dried up so much they built houses on. And many people don't know why some of the houses sink. He tells me that they're sinking now. That was back in the 70s. Well, when you do that which is right in the sight of the Lord, whether you know this or whether you don't know this, some of you, God will give you to find out. If, for instance, you're in real estate or you want to buy a house and build, he'll give you to know. And others, just because you did that which is right in the sight of the Lord, uh, a certain deal won't go through. Uh, or, or you won't even be attracted to that track of land. But know that it's because you did that which is right in the sight of the Lord. So these are, so there's diseases and there, that aren't going to come on you. And there's possession that's going to come to you, the opportunity to have. Now you're going to need to walk that out. Now uh, Deuteronomy 12, 25. Thou shalt eat, shall not eat it, that it may go well with thee. Now there's some things that God says he don't want you to eat that stuff. Now we know that uh, through Peter, God showed us that you don't call anything uh, unclean that he made clean. And at the same time, Paul told Timothy, you know, drink a little wine for your stomach's sake, that there's sometimes some situations where you're going to need to eat a certain way. He needed to drink a little wine or where you're going to not eat a certain way because of the here a little there a little. Remember the Isaiah 28, uh, pardon me, Isaiah 10, uh, Isaiah 28, 9 and 10. So that the here a little there a little in your specific circumstance. I was just letting somebody know about allergies. You can eat the honey of the land that you're in, where the, that you have the allergies from, and it will cause the allergies to leave off of you. You don't have to rebuke a devil. <laughs> you know, just drink some hot, eat, use when you drink tea or coffee or whatever it is. Um, put your lemonade, put the honey of the land in it. This is something God ordained already in the earth. We're going to do some more of knowing, do that which is right in the sight of the Lord, the blessings that are just in it. Amen.
Okay, now we're still in the Pentateuch. That is the precept. So understand that the things that we've already shared, those are things that will cover your entire life for your whole entire life. And we're going to, well, I'm going to show you something else. It'll cover your generations. It'll cover your purposes, your purpose, even when you don't know what your purpose is and when you do know what your purpose is. And most of us, when, we're, when we get to know our purpose, we only know a portion. We don't even get to know what well, we can. God will show us, but we don't usually know all of it. So in 12, let me see. We already gave you 12. We gave you 618, uh, Deuteronomy 618. Thou shalt do that which is right in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with you, that thou mayest go to possess the good land. Okay, we gave you that. So in 12, there's, there's two of them, in 25 and in 28. I'm going to gallop through. I know that I like to stop and take and break it apart to us, but uh, thou shalt not eat it. Now, what is he saying not to eat? But let me read the rest. Uh, that it may go well with you. Now, watch. He went in going well with you and being well with you. While that's just a little word, it's a whole lot in your life. Because some things follow you. Some things walk with you. Some things are recurring. And some things, when he talks about having, he talks about uh, that it, uh, how it will be with you. And right now, he just now, in 25, he says, uh, Thou shalt not eat it, that it may go well with you. And, watch this, I want to really show you this, with thy children after thee. So doing right in the sight of the Lord will affect your children. And that's whether you mean for it to or not. That's whether psychology understands that thing or not. Here's, here's a, a horrendous example, warning you now, horrendous example. Do you remember, I think it was Shimea, or a uh, name similar to that, that cursed David when he was coming out. And he says, um, he told him, he told him, you're a bloody man, you're a bloody man. And, and one of uh, David's men of valor said, shall I kill him? And David said, no, maybe the Lord told him to curse. Remember, David is a man after God's own heart, which means he has an understanding of the things of the Lord in God's sight. Notice that do that which is right in the sight of the Lord. It was the Lord God that is David's concern. Remember when he repented in Psalm 51, he says, um, Against the only have I sinned. Now he knew he sinned against the people. He sinned against Bathsheba. He sinned against the um, the general that he sent and gave the orders to to go kill Bathsheba's husband. But he's he's understanding that these things are wrong before you. These are against your precepts, against your commands. That's what he's talking about. He's not saying I didn't hurt anybody, but you, Lord. No, he understands. That's what it means to be a man after God's own heart. That you understand the precept from God and that it affects so many things. So this particular precept, uh, he says, it affects your children and your children's children. 
when thou shalt do that which is right in the sight of the Lord. Now, that's a precept. I'll let you know when it's in the Pentateuch, it's a precept. It governs everything, and that's whether you know it or not, whether you like it or not, whether you understand it or not. These are God's command. These are God's precepts that govern the universe or the, this generation of heavens and earth, as he said. So I want to show you this, that... um. Uh, in 12, what was that, 1225, uh, what he said not to eat, because uh, it kind of goes with, well, let me just find it. In 25, uh, thou shalt not eat, or he says, only be sure, this is, I'm trying to see, it's, I'm looking at 20, 22, 23, only be sure that thou eat not the blood for the blood is the life, and thou mayest not eat the life of the flesh. See, most of us, when we think God's giving law, we're, we're so busy looking at Levitical law and know that Jesus fulfilled that, that we don't realize that there is law that was God's law. Cain and Abel knew to do sacrifices because it was a law of God, not Levitical. Okay, so there's a law of God about eating blood. Now, people that deal in witchcraft and all that kind of all the other kind of mess know that. That's why even you hear like uh, the the vampire stuff. It's all it's about blood and sucking blood and drinking blood, because God has precept about blood. And what He let you know, life is in the blood. You're not to be eating that. We know today. Uh, we don't necessarily know why, and and maybe by now we know why. Uh, in terms of science and and man thinking that he knows something. But we will kill an animal, or as to be kind, we'll put down an animal that will kill a human being. One of the things that we know and understand that when a human being spills human blood, they will hunt that blood. They will kill a man again. Now, we don't mind animals killing each other, okay? And God gave a way when, when God took us from just eating the herbs and, and, and all of that in Noah. He gave a way to kill and eat. It's not just Leviticus that you drain the blood. And many of us know that there's different diseases uh, that come from eating um, uh, um, stuff with a whole lot of blood in it. Because life is in the blood. Now I want you to understand. Now put those things together that we understand. There's a God told the, the the Hebrews how to drain the blood out so that you're not eating blood. You go to the supermarket today and they want to put the freshest blood on there so it's the meat's more red so that you want to buy it. But God has a way and he says, you don't eat that. You don't eat that. We're not talking Levitical. We're talking precept of God about blood. That you don't want to be eating a, a whole bunch of blood. You don't, you don't want to be doing that. And then he says with that, and some of us don't realize that it's connected. And, and yet we do realize, like I said, we know that we'll put down an animal that has shed human blood. And one of the things uh, I was talking about the movie called Noah. Now, I think it's a terrible movie in terms of Noah. I think that it was a trick on the body of Christ in terms of Noah. But it shows you Nimrod, that he's just killing. This was when man was still supposed to be eating um fruits and, and, and things of the ground, things that grew, before God gave how to eat meat. M mind you, man had shed blood. Cain had shed blood. Uh, Lamech had shed blood. Um, uh, I think he said 70 times more, or seven times more than what Cain had done. He took a wife. You know, man starts just doing what he wants. And by the time Nimrod comes along, now he's an assassin. He's it says, uh, then man, men began, began to call on the name of the Lord. That's calling his name in vain uh, and, and profaning the name of the Lord. But what they show in the movie that the scripture bears out, I don't know that they meant to do this in that movie Noah, but, but Nimrod, he was just killing anything and eating anything, any kind of way, and he understood he was getting power. Now, some of you, you think you want to do this? You'll put a curse on yourself. I'm letting you know right now. I'm letting you know right now. Because some of you, you walk in some of this witchcraft. And, and yeah, you're called of God. And you're a man or woman of God. And yet you want to dibble and dabble in this stuff because it gives you power. 
Well, you don't want to do that. Here's where God said about doing that which is right in his sight. He said, you don't eat that. You don't eat that. You don't eat blood. And why? He said, because life is in the blood. He's the one that made it that way. And uh, and then don't go flaky about you can't have a blood transfusion. I know that uh, there's one little uh, cult that, that says that, you know. And they think they're getting it from the word. Now, you got to rightly divide the word. But I want you to understand doing right in the sight of the Lord. The value that's in it. So that's a precept about not eating blood is a precept. And he says, um, where were we, 1225? He says, thou shalt not eat it. That it may go well with you. Now, I, I, I'm not going to stop there. I want, us to, I want us to keep on going on that which is right in the sight of the Lord. Uh, maybe I'll do a, a, a little webinar or, or video or something on uh, and elucidate some more on that. So, And it's going to go well with your children after thee. See, in medicine we know now that certain things are hereditary. We think That's what we think. That's what we call it. Or they're in the genes. That's what they called it when I was young. Now it's in the DNA. But what God is letting you know that you do that which is right in the sight of the Lord. You need to know that you can eat things in blood It's not, and there are diseases in the blood. That they won't show up for you, but they'll show up in your children's children. God says here, don't eat that. And it'll be well with you and with your children after thee. When thou shalt do that which is right in the sight of the Lord. We don't have to have science back something up for us. We don't even have to understand it. As a matter of fact, what we normally do is make it so religious, we don't understand that it's medical, natural. Uh, not that it's not worshiping the Lord, because it can be all of that too. You know, worshiping the Lord can keep some of us sane. Some of us won't have our sanity if we do not worship. Some of us, it will keep our sanity not to eat the blood. And, you, you know, we wonder why certain um, insanities show up and certain mental disorders and we haven't found out yet. And some of it, we may go back and find out or go forward and find out that that came from the blood. And God said... Don't eat that. Do that, which is right in the sight of the Lord, because God already knows. Okay, so Deuteronomy, now in, in 12, he says, observe to hear all the words of which I command you. Not put it in our pockets. And the one of the pockets that I'm, I'm on today is making it so that it's Levitical law, knowing Jesus fulfilled the law. And so we don't have to follow the law. He's talking Levitical law. Because we still live in under the, the stars. We still live under this, this generation of heaven and earth. And there are commands. One of them is that we're supposed to, to take care of this planet. And Jesus, that's fulfilled. That's fulfilled by us doing greater works than what he did. But the fulfillment of the law, the fulfillment of the Levitical law, yes, Jesus did that. But there's law and commandment that came way before that, that runs this planet and that are for our good and our blessing and for our children and our children's children or our children after thee. Now, observe to hear. Hey, God's very big on us being hearing. And um, I love that science has finally found out that that sound make, makes motion that causes hearing. <coughs> God says a thing and it causes hearing. And he says, you observe. Now, observe means that you've got to make it your business. That you've got to make it a priority with yourself. That you're going to hear the words of the Lord. And what does he say again? So it may be well. Now, this time it's with you. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm looking at the last three we read. It's well with you well with you, which I could take and go through the prepositions, because God uses certain prepositions on purpose. You know, with, among, on, uh, in the Lord's Prayer, it's uh, thy will be done in earth, in earth, as it is in heaven, and most of us like to say on. Uh, but when God gave it, he said in. Okay, back to Deuteronomy 12, 28. Observe and hear. And he says, all, all, not just like a box of chocolates, pick and choose what you want. No, all that I command you. I gave you the whole thing so that you have it all when you need it. 
and you have it all as you need it and you have it all and you don't have to wonder usually when we're going through a situation we don't know we're wondering what to do what to use and all of that he says no you observe all and then as you need it the spirit of the lord is going to show you what you have what's that in your hand but to so that when you do that which is right in the sight of the lord that's how it is with you watch this by the way i don't want to skip this Observe to hear all the words which I command thee, dealt with that, that it may go well with thee, dealt with that, and with thy children, children after thee. Now he said that in 25, but watch now what he adds, forever. Now I like in King James, forever is not one word, because when we, in our minds, we think of forever as a block of time, like, um, but what he's saying, forever. As if I said for a year, ever is a, a, it's wrong to say it's a block of time because it's, it's more than other than time, even though it's, it deals with time in the way that eternity is beyond time, all the time. But if you use time to explain it, then that, that takes that away. So ever for the way that we think, I'll say ever is a block of time. It's very close to forever. It's closer to forever than it is to time the 24 hour days the way we think. But he wants you to know that it's going to be well with you when you do that, which is right in the sight of the Lord. Now, before he said, for your children after thee, now he adds for, that's for the purposes of ever, that uh, medically speaking, then none of these diseases are just are, are going to come up. At any time, uh, you, you, you know how they like to say if you're prone to diabetes, if it's in your family. He's letting you know, no, 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 no. For, for the purposes of ever, as long as uh, ever is, is as long as it's going to be well with you and with your children. Now, 21.9, Deuteronomy 21.9, So shalt thou put away from uh, the guilt of innocent blood from among you. Now, God had just got finished setting up the law so that uh, you know how to punish the guilty and not let blood be spilt and nothing happens. It, it, there has to be uh, punishment and retribution. And he says, so you've got to do that when thou shalt do that which is right in the sight of the Lord. So he's letting you know murder can't just happen and nothing's done about it. That's part of doing that which is right in the sight of the Lord. Now we move into another aspect that's more the line upon line. In 2 Kings 12, um, he's showing us some things that I want you to see about people when they're young. We're so busy waiting in our day and time. We're waiting for people to be grown to manifest certain things or a certain calling. And, and, and here, watch, in 2 Kings 12, in the seventh year of uh, Jehu, Joash began to reign, and 40 years reigned he in Jerusalem. And his mother's name, notice when God tells you uh, the mother's name, the mother had quite a bit mother influence that God has ordained. Now, not all of them use it the way God ordained, but that mother influence is what causes that. Now, father is extremely important, but there's a mother influence. Mother is shepherd, in case you don't know that. Okay, the El Shaddai, that's a mother kind of purpose. We're going to come back and look at that and wind up. Your name is higher than any other. To every nation And here I will lift my voice in
we're looking at that which is right in the sight of the Lord. And before, I began to tell you about a, a, a thing with David where the guy came out and cursed him. And David said, ah, let him curse. I want to show you a connection about doing that which is right in the sight of the Lord. I want to make the connection for you here. But I'm going to read to you these two and I'm going to really gallop through so that I can make that other connection. But in 2 Kings, now if we're looking at Isaiah, line upon line, line upon line, we did precept. I'm moving to line upon line now to show you how this the precept can walk out. We already saw that some of that doing which is right in the sight of the Lord is going to make make the right things and wonderful things to happen for your children and your children's children. Now watch this. In the seventh year, king of Jehu, jo Joash began to reign. Forty years reigned he in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Zebu Zebuah of Beersheba. Some of you know Beersheba. And Joash, watch, did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. See, even kings, even politicians need to do that which is right in the sight of the Lord. Watch this. All his days, watch this, wherein Jedediah the priest instructed him. See, some of us, we can do right while a certain person is alive. And it doesn't mean that you need to go get another prophet or another priest. I know we like to think that that we everybody has to have somebody over them. That's not what God is showing us here. But I do want you to see that um, he was young and he needed instruction. And God had set up for him a wonderful priest to instruct him. Another one had a wonderful prophet at his time. Now, but the high places were not taken away. The people still sacrificed burnt incense in high places. Now, that's where I want you to see that we mean well. Righteous people. I'm not talking about heathen. But high places, those are heathen things. And, and the people, <coughs> pardon me, are still doing some heathen practices. None of us mean to do uh, um, against the Lord when we're doing it. We think we're right. Whenever, okay, uh, I want to go to 2 Kings 14. In the second year of Joash, son of uh, Jehoahaz, king of Israel, reigned Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah. Now, for the most part, most of the kings of Judah were really good and the kings of Israel were bad. Now, you want to go in particular and see that, but I'm just letting you know in general. And he was 25 years old. He was a young man when he began to reign and reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jehoadan and of Jerusalem. And he did now, all of these, this stuff matters, but I want to get through this to show you this principle. He did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, yet not like David, his father. He did according to all things as Joash his father did. Now mind you, Joash, um, he did right, okay? But he didn't, we're looking at uh, Amaziah. He did like his dad, which was, it was right in the sight of the Lord. It wasn't like David. See, David wouldn't stand for uh, too much mess. Uh, he would, he took down the, the groves and the, the idol type places. Make no mistake, being a man after God's own heart, he couldn't let this be with that. You know, the bitter water with the sweet. And I want you to see that. Now, remember the other scriptures that we read that are precept, that it will be well with your children? Watch this. Now, when that man came out against David and said, you're a bloody man, David did not curse him. David David wouldn't let the men kill him. The men deserved death. And we find that when Solomon uh, took reign, you find out that the man deserved death. And he deserved it of his own way. When you look that he couldn't even keep the contract that he made for as to what was going to keep his own life when God gave mercy upon mercy. But during the reign of Saul. Now, this was years that David was ordained king. He was anointed king, but he didn't come into the kingship yet. Years went by. How do you know? When he was uh, uh, in with the Philistines and the lords of the Philistines came uh, and didn't want David to go out with them, he said to the king, uh, the king that, that it was okay with him, but he told David, don't go. He says, why, why? I, haven't I been all these years with you? Okay. So we know it was years that he's still anointed king and he's not in king. 
and Saul is fighting. Now in, uh, I forgot where it is, uh, in, in the scriptures it tells us that the Gibeonites, you can look up Gibeonites, when, when after Saul's dead, mind you, Saul has died, David is on the throne. There is a famine in the land and David says, what's the cause? And, and God, <coughs> God tells him the cause, okay? This isn't like we are doing today in our political, you know, this one's making up stuff on the word of God, using the word of God to back it up. No, you got to rightly divide the word. God tells him it's because of Saul. He was bloody with the Gibeonites. Now, God is the one who commanded. The Gibeonites were related to the Amorites who God said he commanded to kill them all. Now, do you remember that Joshua, uh, the, the, some Gibeonites got to be afraid when they saw that they took some big cities when they first came out under Joshua and um, and that they were afraid because they believed God. See, the fear of the Lord will cause you to have some wisdom about you. It will cause you to know what you need to know and not just what somebody told you what you heard or what you think you can do about it. It will make it so that you're not leaning to your own understanding and so they didn't. Well, they did and they didn't. They believed God. So they made a pact with Joshua. They brought, brought some old bread and made it like they were coming from way far away and they were just around the corner. And, and Joshua, the scripture tells you that he didn't seek the Lord and then he made a pact with them. Now, God tells you that you're to keep your promise. You're to keep your word, even to your own hurt. Like if you opened your mouth and you weren't supposed to, and you made a promise that you wish you hadn't made, or that the person you made it to wasn't worthy of the promise. No, you made it. You keep your word. So God let us know. That's God's precept, okay? So God let us know, and, and they knew they had to do that. You, I want you to know that when um, we all know the miracle of when God made the sun stand still, he was fighting for the Gibeonites. He wasn't even fighting for Israel. He was fighting for the Gibeonites. That's how serious God is about you're going to keep your word, even when it costs you. You're going to keep your word. He was fighting for them. Well, anyway, Saul comes along, and he slaughtered them anyway, making them, oh, well, they're Amorites, and God said, kill the Amorites. Now watch this, what I showed you here about, about uh, Joash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord in the all his days wherein Jedodiah the priest instructed him. I want to show you a principle, don't have time to take you back to, remember Saul was king while Samuel was priest. I mean, um, um, Samuel was prophet. Pardon me, prophet, trained by Eli the priest. And the scripture says about Samuel, none of his words fell to the ground. Now, God, Saul's first encounter, any to know anything about Samuel, was to know that you don't do anything till he gets here. You you go back and read it. When he lost his father's donkeys and he went to, well, let's go find the seer, it's called, not prophet. He called him a seer. In the old days, they were called a seer. And, and when he got there and the, the people... He, the people, you know, is there a seer? Is there a prophet here? Yes. He knew to bring an offering. That's God. Now, I know people like to mess up with that, but you need to do what's right in the sight of the Lord and not worry about how people um, perpetrate on the word of the Lord and his purposes. But I want you to understand, Saul knew that you wait on the prophet. You don't call him late when he didn't get there when you thought. The whole town was waiting and the sister told him, we're waiting because we don't do anything till he gets here. So remember when Saul was waiting on Samuel uh, when he did this battle and then he sacrificed anyway? It wasn't his place to sacrifice. Some of you understand that. But Saul knew the precept is you wait till Samuel gets here. If he says he was coming at a certain time and a certain time happens and he's not there, he learned it in his first encounter. His first thing that he learned about the seer, about Samuel is, you don't do anything till he gets there. You just wait. And he knew that. And he, not being a man after God's own heart, he went ahead and sacrificed. And remember, that's how he got the kingdom torn from him. I want you to understand that you do what's right in the sight of the Lord so it's well with your children. Well, now watch this. Saul's dead. He's dead and gone. There's a famine in the land and, and uh, David's king and he knows it's not supposed to be like that. With me, 
God makes my enemies make uh, peace with me. That's not just the people. That's that's the rain and everything. What's the cause? And he said, because of the Gibeonites, because of the bloodiness of Saul. You see, the thing that he was accused of, he, did, he didn't do it. It looked like it because he was a man of war. It was Saul who was bloody. And watch this, for your children's children. The Gibeonites said, what are, what are you going to do? Got to make this right. And they said, give us seven sons of Saul. And they killed seven sons of Saul because of what he did. You want it to be well with you even after you're gone. And with your children when you do that which is right in the sight of the Lord. Amen. You are blessed and anointed of God. You are ablaze with the glory of God. God has blessed the work of your hands and you walk in favor with God and man. You think from the word and you make wise moves. You are blessed and excel in all that you do. You always attract people of wisdom and an excellent spirit and you engage in transactions and situations of vast, excellent and lasting merit. You are occupied with people and endeavors on a plane of timely, immediate, high and positive return in the internal, the external and the eternal realm, in the temporal, the celestial, the natural, the spiritual in the personal, interpersonal community, national and global. You move in all that pertains to life and godliness, according to the promises of God in all of their fullness. You are continuously and profoundly supplied in time, resources, wisdom and health, in favor and finance and all manner of wealth, in revelation and vision of things present and things to come, in the knowledge and understanding and zeal of the Holy One. You are called to His glory, His virtue and His praise. You are elected to his power, his loving kindness, and his grace. You are clothed with humility, and you are prudent in matters. You are blessed and anointed, highly favored and appointed, and you are full of the word of God and its demonstration. God has appointed your going out and your coming in. He has ordained that your very life exemplify him. Righteousness, justice, and holiness unto the Lord is the mark of your call, and the resurrection power and the glory of God you will fulfill all. You are blessed and anointed of God. You are ablaze with the glory of God.